The Mopar spec Bison harnesses from Morimoto are designed to provide reliable power delivery to HID systems, ballasts, and complicated applications such as new Dodge Rams and Jeep JKs, for example. They have a lot of extra gear such as resistors and capacitors compared to the normal harnesses, but even with that, they're really not all that difficult to connect. Everything is still plug and play. So what I'm going to do here is unwrap the H13 version of the harness and go over all of the different connections with you so you can check it out. So once we get it out of the bag, see the harness itself has all kinds of accessories attached to it. Now, get this unraveled. A lot of different things to look at here. But the first thing that you'll notice is that thankfully, all of the connections are actually labeled. So that helps you sort it out a little bit between ground, high beam, etc. Now, stemming out from the heart of the harness is the relay. It spreads out a little bit. And the relay, first and foremost, you're going to want to mount that on the side closer to the car battery. And the reason that we recommend doing that is because then all of the wire lengths will be spaced out properly from there. Now, when you're mounting this, it doesn't have to be mounted to anything in particular, but do make sure that you mount it with the wires exiting from the bottom, and that way, no moisture can ever get into the bottom of the relay and corrode the contacts or harm the relay, leaving you with a lamp out. So, once you have the relay mounted, you're going to want to locate the OEM input, which is this part here. There's only one of these on the harness, and this is basically what's going to receive the signals from the factory outlet on the vehicle. Now, this one in particular is an H13, as you can see. If you have a 9007, this will actually be a little bit of a different shape than blue in color. So this goes to, again, the factory outlet, which is currently plugged into the normal halogen light bulb. Off of the factory input is two resistors, on the H13 version at least. There's others on the 9007. The resistors need to be mounted to a metal surface because, as you guessed, they get hot. It even says on there, caution, hot when power is on. So make sure that you use the tabs on the resistors and mount those to metal and then ground the resistors to metal as well. It's very important that these are grounded properly. If they're not, they may not get hot, they may not do what they're supposed to, and you may still be left with light out errors on the dash. And there, you've got one single pigtail. Pigtail is connected to a capacitor. This capacitor helps to absorb any pulsed voltage that comes from the factory inlet, smooth it out before the power is delivered to the ballast, leaving you with constant operation. Out of the box, this capacitor link is already connected to the harness, so just leave it alone. Going down the line, we have two sets of outputs. One set that has yellow grommets, and another set that has orange grommets. Now, these are labeled, but as you can see, the ones that have the yellow grommets are for the HID ballast. This is a 9006 female connector. It will plug directly into the side of your ballast, because all ballasts from TRS have 9006 male connectors. It should make that very easily. Now, off of those ballast connectors, you have one ground. Each one has it. On the side of your engine bay, there should be a factory grounding location. It's very common inside a lot of modern vehicles. We recommend using that to make this grounding point as well. It's very important that this is grounded to solid metal. Do not recommend grounding this to a painted surface, a plastic surface, or any rubber washers or anything like that. It's extremely important that this gets solid metal to metal to contact to make sure that everything works properly. The very last two connections on the harness, which I already mentioned, are for the high beams. As you can see, it's labeled high beam here next to the connection. Now, what these are going to go to are either the high beam solenoids on your bi-xenon projectors or the actuators on the high-low bul bulbs. So basically, when you hit the high beams inside the truck, power will come out of these and turn the, the, uh, the lights to high beam mode. So other than that, it's really easy to connect this harness. You should not have to cut anything. It's designed to be completely plug and play. And as long as you follow these instructions, you should be good to go. If, however, you have any questions about it, don't hesitate to contact us. We'd be more than happy to help you get it set up correctly.